Did we get the nose bridges? Yeah, I did. Okay. I got a bag. The mask project came about during shelter in place in March. And at that point, it was just really difficult to find any kind of face mask. You know, I was going into the grocery store and I saw a sign that says, you must wear a mask to enter. And I was just thinking about people who don't have the ability to make their own masks or don't have the resource to buy a mask. And now they can't even go into that space. And so for me, that really was the moment I had to do something. It all started with this Business Insider article that showed that shop towel, this sort of tough paper towel material, does a pretty good job of filtering small particles out. The guiding principles of the design were really low cost, readily accessible materials. And for us to be able to scale this at all, it needed to be a no-sew design. And that's how we arrived at the stapled fold design. Our new design incorporates a high efficiency filter layer between the shop towel and it actually has um, up to 95% filtration of submicron particles, which is very similar to an N95 type material. What makes this possible is a decentralized production structure. So we have kit coordinators, and they will assemble kits of prepared materials, about 40 masks per kit, and they'll be picked up by assembly volunteers. And the assembly volunteers will take these home and assemble the masks at home. We consolidate all the masks that come back completed, and then our distribution teams go out to over 100 recipient organizations across the Bay Area and beyond. So I was a kit coordinator and I assembled about 30 kits for the Dublin 4-H Club. We had about 30 to 40 people participate in making the masks. It makes me feel like I have a part in the community and that I'm able to help the people around me. Hey there. I have a, just a pretty simple role, which is I load up my car and bring it to San Francisco. It's good to feel like I'm doing something, but I mean, the task is enormous. And there, luckily, there are a lot of people willing to step forward. Face shield. You good? Face shield. I work for Cold Tenderloin. This is a pop-up that we do three days a week. When we hit the ground running, like March, when, when it all the frenzy hit, they weren't wearing masks. These are nice, this is different. I do appreciate it. I don't want COVID, okay? It makes it that much easier. We give our masks, we normally try to give out two masks. One for you, one for your buddy. One for you, one for your girlfriend. One for you, one for your neighbor. Keep that mask up, sir. Cause that's a technology that is very important for us to keep our folks safe. How you doing? How you doing? You want a mask? Oh, yeah. Some heavy duty things, is it? Yeah. I'm, myself, I'm a humanitarian. I think uh, just like even a little bit of kindness goes a long way. So we've got about 400 masks. These are going to the Navajo Nation in Utah. We have made a total of about 16,000 masks uh, since the project began in March. And we just ordered supplies to make another 12,000 masks. If you stop one of those cases, then you stop all the, the infections that could arise from that case. To, to say, oh, you know, we built this pipeline, we got this mask design, we've done some fundraising, we have the money, um, and to say, oh, I'm just too tired, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, that doesn't seem like an option to me. We have to do this.